Howdy there, everybody. Welcome to the Subpar Policy Texas Special. My name is Stumpy. My name is Cole. And we're here to discuss the pen, the pen, the pen, the second to last week of the RLCS. As ever, all of our patrons at patreon.com slash subpar but in HD can fuck off. Fuck off. Thanks for supporting this here podcast with your generosity, you little, you little yellow belly shits. We're joined by Top Poke himself from Dignitas Verge. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys? I'm good. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, good. I mean, so right, before we start recording, you, we, we send the, the Google Doc over uh, just so that you can see if there's anything like that you don't want to talk about and whatever. And I said, yeah, I'm going to do like a Texas intro, whatever. And you go, I'm not actually from <laughs> Texas. <laughs> and then we went on a bit of a tangent. So, and it's actually where your name is from as well. So where are you from originally? So I grew up in uh, the island called St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. And that's where Verge comes from. Yes. It's, uh, it's short for <laughs> Virgin from the Virgin Islands. Uh, it was just kind of a way to <laughs> always pay tribute to where I'm from, I guess. So we... We shorten if like if we're if we're insulting somebody, <laughs> we'll call, we'll call them a virgin. We'll say oh yeah. like he, he saved it. Oh what a virgin, and we'll shorten yeah. it. I'm sorry to say to verge, and we'll call them an absolute verge, <laughs> which I've always seen as an homage to you rather than an insult against you personally. <laughs> you know, being honest, I'll take it as a compliment that you guys even talk about me. <laughs> so wait, the, the Virgin Islands—they're not like just off the coast of the USA, are they? They're a long way away. Yeah, they're down in the Caribbean Ocean, like pretty far away. So you, so we were looking at the island. I've got the map open right now. It is a tiny island. Did you say you were from St. Thomas? Yes, St. Thomas. Okay, so it's quite a long island. It's got an airport, fair play. Okay. It does. Well done, now that one. It's got, by the looks of things, one city centre. <laughs> <On the, laughs> it's, it's not so much of a city centre either. <laughs> it's called, uh, oh, I can see the shops there. Charlotte Amalia. Yeah, it's got Ivy's Bar and Grill, Splash and Dash Car Wash. That's a good name. <laughs> that is pretty good. And it has about eight shops. <laughs> well done, Virgin <laughs> Islands. It's about all of them, yeah. <laughs> How long did you live there? Uh, I was there for 13 years, from when I was born to when I was 13. 13 years. Do you, I, I, I've got a theory that no. you, my friend, are the most famous person from the Virgin Islands. That might be true. <laughs> to, to have elevated <laughs> yourself to the lofty perch of being subpar but NHD potty C worthy, <laughs> I can't think of any other Virgin Islands-based celebs that we'd have on this podcast. Wait, you can Google it, can't you? Like, they have on... <laughs> um, uh, what is it? They have on Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia. The famous people section. All right, who have we got? They don't have a section. <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have etymology, history, demography. That's not the one. Is that the word? Is that how you'd say that? That's the bad guy off Stranger Things, isn't it? The demography. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic control. See also. References, sources, and external links. There's no section for famous people. Maybe we can get Lukash on that to like add you in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the section. Yeah, holy shit, it's just Verge on his own, chilling out. <laughs> um, so, Verge, obviously, we've got you here to talk all about week seven of the RLCS. But before we get into our key matches that we want to be chatting about, we've got a lot to talk to you about with Dignitas. Because quite recently, you ended up going full-time coaching with them. Congratulations. Um, what was that like? Thank How you. did that end up coming about, working with Dignitas in the first place, then going full-time? Uh, well, earlier this, so... Actually, I'll start with, I guess... My story starts with Allegiance. Um, mm. When Allegiance shut down, uh, I had a choice. Like I had to make a choice on whether to go back home because they moved me out to Texas here. Uh, go back home and go back to what I was doing before esports and before Rocket League. What was that? Uh, I was just working at a, a restaurant as a server and bartender okay. uh, and, and going to school part-time. <laughs> So it was either go back to that and go back home and live with my parents again or my mom again and then do that or uh, take a chance and stay here in Texas and do uh, Gamers Ready and coach on the side and just continue coaching and pushing it. Um, and I took the risk. I stayed and did coaching full time on Gamers Ready mm. and it worked out. And so I was like still in practice. Um, and then Dignitas put out a post that they're looking for a, uh, an analyst, a junior analyst, they called it. Um and I applied for that, and it was like a pretty rigorous application process. They had like a really, really um, in-depth like analysis that they wanted you to do and send them. Uh, and I did that and didn't hear anything back for like two months, reached back out to them, and they said, hey, sorry, we've already picked somebody, and it isn't you. 
Uh, but oh. you were, you know, you were a close competition, so we appreciate you submitting. <clears throat> and so then, like a week later, Snasky got announced as their junior analyst. Mm. Oh yeah. And so from there, uh, I just continued doing Gamers Ready and like grinding the the coaching and and just trying to get better at it. And then I saw uh, a tweet that Snasky got picked up by Complexity as their coach, mm. uh, and that was like I, I saw that tweet like thirty minutes after it posted, and I immediately messaged Dignitas and said, "Hey." Sorry about losing your coach. Are you guys trying to fill that position? <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is this is like mid Snasky going on his like relegation run as well. Like, yeah, he, mm-hmm. he dropped Dig down and he thought, "Fuck it, I'm not done there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a go at complexity." And he actually succeeded with them. Oh, so well God. done. He, he got his yeah, he got Respect. it in the end. So he messaged Dignitas after that. Yeah. So I messaged them and they said, "Yeah, um, we are looking to fill that position." And we'll give you a tryout. So they plan on giving me a three-day tryout where over the course of three days, I'd work with the team and kind of show them what I do as a coach and and what I would be doing for them as a team. Um, And on the first day, uh, you know, Panda had told me that they wanted me. So that was like a really Hmm. big like relief of... Yeah. So like it was the first day, uh, I spent a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think he just realized that like I knew what I was talking about, and I wasn't mm. just some kid like, hey, you know, I, w- I kind of want to make it as a pro coach and yeah, like yeah. help you guys out. He saw that like I worked for it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it that's kind of how it started. And from there, like I worked with them just before BTS, uh, and then they went to BTS, did extremely well. I think they came in third place, mm-hmm. uh, and then we started our season. That was Astros shortly first, after wasn't that. It? BTS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's, you, it, what's it been like then starting with Astro Sorica? What's it been like then starting with a fresh player? Starting at a sort of similar-ish time to you. Because obviously I know that when we had Panda on the podcast, he was talking about the fact that Dignitas did have to look into some the sports psychology side of things with Astro. Um, was that something that you found difficult to lean into? Or was that something you were relatively open to? Um so before I even came on, they said that they were like looking for somebody who was um, not not just a, a strategic coach, but somebody who could help with the emotional side of things. Mm. Um, and I told him, <clears throat> I'm no counselor, I have no degree, but I can definitely try my best. Uh, and so from the start, I've kind of been not just with Astral either. I think um, I think a lot of the the eyes are on him for that specifically, just because that's like one of his main factors mm-hmm. on whether yeah. he does well or not. But really. Um, the whole team I've been working with on on keeping great mentality and just working on stuff like that. Um, but I was, you know, more than happy to, to help him with it because he's got so much potential and I saw it and I knew that if he could get a handle of, of how he thinks and make sure that he's consistent in that mindset, um, then he can absolutely be the best player in the world. Yeah, he's playing like it at the moment. Mm. We were discussing in our Discord the other day, I uh, said the other day, on um, Sunday, yesterday for the RCS, that I, I think... At the moment, Astral is is staking a claim at being one of the best players. In my opinion, mm. he's making a claim to be the best threes player yeah, in current form. And that must give you so much pride to see him out there. And I guess at this point, a lot of the lessons that you've been teaching him, he can, he must start to sort of apply them himself on the fly. Yeah, so like, there's actually a lot of stuff that um, I just see him picking up on so quickly like hmm. not that he needs me to show him but every now and like i the way that i play the game i like to sit and free play and just find new stuff uh because i think that everything is useful you just have to find where it's useful. i've watched a lot of your tutorials because of that <laughs> on youtube <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate that um <laughs> yeah so I, i'll show him some like mechanics and stuff that i mess with in free play that like aren't really used in game or i'll notice and um, one of them was wave dashing on the wall where you're on the wall and you can wave dash in place and gain speed without coming off the wall. Mm. Uh, and, and I've, I've never seen anybody use it. I've never seen, uh, I mean, recently pe- more people are, but back then nobody was really doing it. And I showed, and, and I didn't know where to use it. Uh, and I showed it to him and like maybe 15, 20 minutes later, he came, <laughs> he, he perfected it and came back with like ways to use it. And now I see him, like now I see him using it in RLCS and like on game day, it's just, there's things that he like picks up, everything he just picks up so quickly. I mean, it must be so fun just being able to basically send him off with a project yeah. of like, look, I've got 15% of a thing here. Can you just find <laughs> the other 85% and then just be really good at it? And he's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 I, can do <laughs> yeah. That. I mean, he's yeah, also exactly. the quieter one. Um, when the comms video has been released, where 
he seems to sort of sit in the background and sort of he's the person who absorbs all the information whilst Panda always says I'm zero zero boost I'm on zero <laughs> just out the back doing on the something I'm behind I'm, I'm holding my controller <laughs> yeah which I mean I've said before I love the amount that he talks I absolutely yeah. adore that it's really fun because when we stream we try and go into either Dignitas um, play style where we yeah. just pass even <laughs> like every opportunity we get we'll try and pass <laughs> and bear in mind we're not good enough to do that by any means <laughs> no. so we try we fail it's fun <laughs> yeah uh, hey, I've seen the I've seen the clips. You guys hit some shots. Ah, there's, there's, there's a few that we're proud of. And then also trying to do the violent panda comms. Of course, everything, but all yeah. three players do it, and yeah. it becomes the messiest thing in the world. But somehow, <laughs> your brain just figures it out, and yeah, like you yeah. become one like symbiotic Rocket League organism, yeah. and you just understand it. So, obviously, with those comms videos, they were. Firstly, I want to say thank you for releasing the first one back until the end of 2019 because mm -hmm. it was, I believe it was after Mouse released theirs. I think they were the first guys to um, do it. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think they were the first. Yeah, and no, I think you're right. It made me realise this is something that I wanted because I've always yeah. liked watching uh, Rocket League streamers stream six mans. And where yeah. you've got the weird yep. like comms and the styles between teams and it all comes together and they need to talk because they can't yeah. just do it all on the fly. Like sort of, you can't just sort of do silence and it will still work. But having those comms videos, I think makes players so much more easily supportable. It's so much more human. I was looking at one of the video's comments where somebody said, watching this made me a fan of Dignitas because it makes them more human. And on Panda's oh, channel, like it has all you guys laughing and yeah. you're fucking about and like the first five <laughs> minutes of like the latest video was just you guys just pissing around just like <laughs> chatting about shit beforehand um yeah how important do you think those videos are then to get your players into the public zeitgeist and get them more support um i think it's like crucial like to their career it's a, a huge stepping stone um i tried to do it on allegiance back mm. when i was working with them and they were just they didn't want me to and when i saw mouse release them i, I just said you know what like they did it somebody else did it Mm. it's going to happen. More people are going to do it. I'm just going to do it now. Like I'm going to do it as, as soon as I can so that we can get on it quick and, and start and, and, and so that we're not like the hundredth team to do comms videos. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and, and so we did it and, and it just like, like you said, there's comments that say like, I'm now a fan of Dignitas. There's literally a comment on there that says, I hated Dignitas until this video. <laughs> <laughs> so like there's, there's definitely, there's definitely like a connection factor to it to where, it lets people know that they are just people and it's um, not and that they have personalities it's not just the players as well because you know we've all fallen in love with violent panda and yukio and astral as expected i do we love violent panda sort of he's know my, those guys I call it, if you know he's my best sure, mate he's your best mate. My, <laughs> the second he's my mate. two time <laughs> world champion <laughs> best friend i've giving out, you everything Wait, who respect. is who is that uh, sorry, but you might know him. Violent Panda, two-time world champion, my best mate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll introduce you guys. I think I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's some guy. Him. Anyway, what I was going like to say was... like nowadays, though. <laughs> what I was going to say was that we all knew that we loved those guys, but in the, um, in the comms videos, there has been an unexpected star that has emerged. Probably the most famous moment from any Rocket League comms video from any team featured your fine self, my man. Uh, were you... <laughs> reluctant to include your voice in it for worried it would take away from the players at all or was it like a, just a natural jump that you'd be in there as well so yes and no like i wanted to put myself in there but i didn't mm -hmm. um i didn't like they're the three of them are very protective of our strategy <clears throat> like the way that we uh the way that we work and, and and the way that our team plays um i actually put out a rotation video that they said something about they're like hey you're, you gave too much information in that video other teams are going to see that and start saw to that video it. yeah um, <laughs> yeah so i was like i was like uh i don't know about that but anyway um they're very protective about like the information so like i, I, I was definitely reluctant um but when i listened to the comms back um i knew that like the, the reason i made the video the way i did is because i wanted people to experience that that day the way that i experienced it um, I wanted them to see the story that I saw. Mm -hmm. And the story that I saw was a team that had like literally given up and gone from just so down in the dirt to to like to the point where they're they're just waiting for the game to end at yeah. that point. Mm. Uh, to to making it to worlds. And I thought that was like a really, really big story the way that it happened. So I just when I was editing the video, it kind of just made itself. Um, you know, I, when I was listening to certain parts, I knew that there had to be this type of music to it. Uh, when mm. I was listening to other parts, I knew that it had to be quiet, whatever. It kind of just, it was a story that I was there just making sure followed the storyline that I, that I experienced.
It was such a natural storyline as well that it ended up emerging where it's the if you lose this next game, you are out. Like, that's your entire season eight journey done. And then you get the mm. reverse move against Barcelona, then win the next series, get to LAN. And then it ends up, obviously, then being the final... Um, uh, so the, comments video, the final comments video from LAN was when you were in third place going for that match to get into the semis. And mm. it was... I mean, we made the, we made a video on it, the story behind the greatest beautiful. overtime that's, in Rocket I mean, League history. That... That video is the best Rocket League video that exists, uh, hands down. And I see how many views it has. It does not have enough views <laughs> at all. We we sl we slightly agree. <laughs> that should be the that should be the biggest video in Rocket League. Yeah, I mean, so it was. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and also you. the fact that it was like such an incredible moment. And then the comms then got released, and they're on Panda's channel in the end. Mm -hmm. But those comms then got released of that overtime, and. Just to add that another layer on mm. top. Well, I was watching it again, and it's exactly like, you know when you watch back the Justin Zero Second goal? And no matter mm. where you are, no matter what's happening, literally thinking about that, I've just got chills. Yeah. Like, you just understand that moment. It's the same thing when I watch this com that comes video again, where it adds an entire another level of focus, of it being hectic, ultimately, of absolute anarchy, but everything is making sense. And the hectic moments that were coming through on stream, having the comms on top of that just elevated it to the next level. And I love that people are receiving comms videos really well because it's content yeah. that I've wanted to see for a little while. It's funny because I remember in the Gfinity Elite series when you and I have been casting together before Stampy and mm -hmm. whoever I was casting with, we'd hear this little voice in our ears. Uh, just to be getting into a cast, it's a really good game. We're in the flow of it. I'm not sure if you've casted yourself first, but sometimes you sort of get into the flow state of the match and you feel like you're sort of bouncing off it well, you're in the right vibe for it. Uh, and then just to get into that, we'd hear in our ears from production, uh, we're going to throw to the comms. And I just remember, whenever that would be said, I'd always turn to something just share a glance, like, oh, for fuck's sake. Because <laughs> at the time, we'd throw to them, and we'd just be left there, listening to them go, I got it. I'm back. I'm left. <laughs> I'm He's got it. Got, <laughs> got unlucky, unlucky. And it was the most dull yeah. thing of all time. Oh. So I don't know if it, no, it if doesn't, comms yeah, it doesn't have work. evolved with Rocket League, or I don't know if 95% of what you hear is, I got it. I think and then Shukaron, obviously you who only was playing shares. in the Elite Series, is just shit. I think that's all it was. He was just was there, not saying anything. Literally, at Shakaron was just being shit and annoying. Do you remember that, how bad it was, though? And like everyone knew, and for some reason, they kept no, insisting I, on yeah. chucking them on. Absolutely. I, I had to go through that. Like I That was something that I went through with Allegiance. Um, and so, like, with Allegiance, I didn't get to coach them very much. Mm -hmm. um, I was their friend that they brought on. You know, I got lucky in the position I was in. Um, to know them and, and qualify and be their manager. Uh, and when I became their coach, they didn't really take it very seriously because we were friends first. Right. Mm. Um, so anything I really told them, they kind of brushed off. So I didn't really tell them much in general. Um, but that was one thing that when I came on a Dignitas, I was excited about because I wasn't friends with them. Mm -hmm. So there would be that level of respect that would be our coach first. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and I knew that I wanted to, to change the way that people communicated in Rocket League. Um, and so when I, and, and Panda, uh, has always been great at communicating, um, you know, right when I came on, I could tell, uh, but it was something, it was like that in the sense that I got it, you go, mm -hmm. you know, it was just kind of slow and, and so much dead space. Uh, and when I came on, like part of, part of our entire play style, the main focus of it is communication. Mm. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very pertinent on this, uh, on the fact that we need to communicate everything we're thinking. Did you find that he struggled to have that role of basically be told that obviously going from winning two world championships and then having somebody brought in and then tell you you need to communicate differently did he have any pushback against that of like hey look i've been running this show for a little bit or did any i kind of i kind of know what the fuck is up like, <laughs> or was he like you know um, what we might need a little bit of help no he was he's been like extremely receptive uh, i was very surprised i was super nervous coming on to to be coaching a two-time world champion in the first place like i was like what what am i going to tell this guy when he goes no no no, i disagree and i'm a two-time world champion <laughs> i'm stumpy's best <laughs> you can only use that card so many times <laughs> <laughs> so you know like and he's nothing like that he's very you know he's he's very very receiving um so i was surprised when when he didn't really have any pushback and really with the communication thing, he was on board because again, he was communicating very well right when I came on. Um, and I think he was excited to have his teammates be pushed to do the same thing. 
So obviously, it seems like at least on the on the public side of things that everything is obviously I imagine it is internally as well going incredibly well at Dignitas. You've got uh, fantastic results, which we'll get on to later. You're currently sitting um, uh, at near the top of Europe, currently in second place, to, uh, behind uh, on the game difference. But mm -hmm. there's also a question that's popping up um, on Twitter quite a lot was. The fact that obviously a lot more teams are getting coaches now and a lot more teams seem to be putting a focus on the sports psychology of things and having somebody there who's almost like an external body to just be like, hey, look, I've got the overview of everybody. This is what might be going wrong a little bit. Um, do you chat to other coaches at all much about how they're doing things or try and learn from each other? Or is it very much an internalized team by team basis? Yeah, um, I would love for it to be a little bit more open, but I understand why it's not. Right mm -hmm. now, it's pretty, like, tight-knit um, because everybody – coaching is so fairly, like, new that I don't think anybody wants to give away their edge of what they do. Um, I'm I'm pretty open about how I handle things, uh, and I try to share as much as I can just because I think that it's important to grow the scene, that mm -hmm. we, we all help each other get better. Um, granted, it's got competition, so we have to beat each other in the end. But mm, yeah, um, yeah, I, I think that it, I would like it to become more open. But it, it's definitely right now a very closed off. You know, these are our secrets. This is what we're doing. We can't tell you mm. thing. Well, just before um, this, we start recording this podcast. I jumped into Greg and stream to sort of put myself through that for a few minutes. <laughs> and uh, he asked me what I was up to. I was like, oh, we're about to do a podcast with Verge. And Greg, and bless him, his little eyes lit up. He was so excited to hear that we were chatting with you. So um, he told me to say that he loves you. So there's lots of respect from Greg oh, to you. Yeah, no, I which... love Greg. Good. Him and I have talked a lot. Good. I'm really happy um, to hear that. Yeah. He's, he's told me that um, whenever he takes out his pen when he's coaching someone on Game is Ready, he calls it the Verge pen. And I was like, <laughs> okay, Greg, I don't know what he's referencing. So feel um, free to fill us in there. Yeah, so fill us right, in with your when, verge pen. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when I started coaching for Allegiance, the first thing I thought was to myself was like, how am I going to tell these guys what I see without showing them? Um, and so I went online and I googled on screen pen, and the first thing that came up was this program called Epic Pen, uh, and I used it and it was perfect. And and so I just I started uh, drawing what I was s like seeing, like, mm. this is what I, where you should go, like arrows circling, like, Hey, this is space that you need to go to, or Hey, th there's three pads right here in this line that you can go in. Uh, and that was like two years ago. Um, and I brought Epic pen to my stream where I started reviewing viewer replays because I wanted to get better at, at analysis. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it for free on my stream for like six months and I used the on-screen pen. And I think more and more people started to like realize coaching, can't really exist without that visual mm. uh, or if it does it's nothing compared to it uh, and so like epic pen just kind of like went around the scene and now like everybody who watches replays uses it it's great <laughs> it's one of those things where you say about how important the visuals are and there was a video that you made relatively recently that amazed me with how well it was done with the uh, I think it was a Bacchus Mod plugin where you had these circles around each car. That was a rotation one, wasn't it? Yeah, and he was saying about where your basically your your circles around your car shouldn't overlap really. Like you need mm -hmm. to try and keep them apart as much as possible, because then you can make sure that you've got efficient lines between each other. That video explained to me in like ten minutes, whatever it was, something that I sort of I think I sort of had on lock about seventy percent, mm -hmm. but it was an extra thirty percent that made me think shit that's a good point Matt. like <laughs> that that it just really works that's and i one can of my promise favorite you verge. illustrations of videos that i've seen using a tool like that i can promise you stumpy is not somebody who is easily willing to listen to advice this is the most this way this is the most stubborn <laughs> human being you will ever For the come benefit across. of an audio podcast cole pointed at verge when he said this is the most yeah stubborn and i was like because i'm a mirror so i was like wait that one he is the most stubborn son of a bitch you will ever see but well, that no, means a lot. I appreciate that. I put a lot of like thought and effort into those videos, uh, and I just try to ask myself, like I try to look at it like I've never played the game before. Um, mm. What would I need to hear to know what to do? It's um, one of the things and, that and we can take from like a sports program as well, right? Where they've got the even on um, mm. football here, where you've got well, not right now. It's all been called off, but. <laughs> Even in football here, you've got the in-between um, uh, games or in the breaks. You yeah. have them even just move the players around and say, look, they should take this line. And right, it helps me yeah. visualize it. And it just makes sense that that also works for a video game where, if anything, it's easier mm -hmm. to do that. My favorite thing in Match of yeah. the Day is where they track the, 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 the flow of the ball. So you see it mm. lead the player's boo. And as the ball moves, it's got like a little blue line behind it. So you can mm. see the curve that it's done yeah. all out. It's beautiful. I love it. No. Yeah, it's um, it's 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 interesting. 
that was like definitely uh, that's why that video took me so long. I think I worked on that video for about uh, two 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 and a half months. Oh wow! Uh, because uh, I was working with a programmer for so long on getting that visual just perfect, um, and we finally got it to the point where um, it is. I call it. <clears throat> your area of influence, what, what you have covered. Uh, and so we program or he programmed it, but we went back and forth on how to do it and getting, getting it right and, and just tweaking every little thing to be perfect. Um, it, it shows you what it's possible uh, for that person in that position with that momentum to get to within the next one second in any direction. Um, and so that shows you what you can cover in the next second. Um, and, and it's a tool that I, I use for our team. Um, and I've had so many people reach out and ask for it, but I can't give it away. <laughs> uh, but it, it, that's, that's what took that video so long to come out. Uh, I was working on it for a very long time, but we just wanted that visual to be perfect. Uh, well, I did specifically because it, it, it was the most important part, I think, of that video is seeing the coverage of everybody on the field and knowing mm. why you shouldn't cross over your teammates or why you shouldn't rotate near post through the, the play and stuff like that. I think it really gives a good example of how inefficient it is to do those kind of things. I mean, the video for anybody who's wondering is called Rotation Guide for Rocket League. It's on Verge's channel. And it is, like I said, it's something... I'm a very visual learner. I remember... Or like hands-on as well, where um, I remember in uh, chemistry when I was looking at my um, grades for it, all the practical stuff, I was getting like B's and A's on. Every exam, I failed. Because I just didn't know the theory behind it. But my God, I could titrate like a motherfucker. So I need that visual guide, the hands-on, just to know exactly what it is that's happening. And that can... I think a lot of people are like that. Um, yeah. If that's around here, I think we can move on to some key matches in Europe, if we're all happy. Blay, blay, blay. Blay, 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 blay. That's our little what? jingle to transition. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's, that Did you good. not know why I was doing that? You both looked at me blankly. Like, Verge, I understand looking at me blankly. But why, <laughs> why did you look at me blankly? Stumping? I think I just like to look at you blankly because it makes you worry. <laughs> okay. And you're like, shit, did I mess up? Did I do something? <laughs> is it not the social norm to do a jingle? What? Am I I <laughs> it's just in conversation. So we're going to have dinner. Oh, it's dinner time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what are you <laughs> eating some bacon? What are you doing? That's okay. Sometimes I get musical or I'll just make noise and my girlfriend will look at me like I'm Do you really? Alien. What noises yeah. do you make? <laughs> uh, I have no, like, I don't have like a list of noises that I go off. Well, you might have some like, like go-tos. I have, um, well, I have ADHD. And so sometimes my brain's just like, say something or make a noise, like do something. And so I'll just like, I'll just do something or I'll just sing what I'm doing. Just, you know, random stuff. <laughs> I love Cut it. in a podcast. <laughs> like I'll, I'll yeah, I'll that? literally walk through the living room and I'll go, I'm doing some laundry, <laughs> and I'll just like <laughs> just walk pa right past her and she'll oh look at me God. like I'm crazy. We need a little song in the next comms video of like <laughs> you're rotating like a dickhead panda. <laughs> Astral, stop chasing, please. <laughs> so yeah, right. Key matches in Europe. <laughs> The two that we ended up picking out were, I mean, both of them, to be fair, for EU and NA, they're both focusing on one team. For EU, it's obviously Dignitas, because it was a very interesting week uh, for Dig. It was double wins. Congrats. Look at that. Mm. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Double wins. The first game was a 3-1 win over Endpoint, and that, along with the Veloce game, ended up putting you at the top of the table with Vitality. Like I said earlier, you're only behind on the, goal di on the game difference, rather, which is fine, lol. Um... I've been pushing for Endpoint. I've been saying that they are a very good team. Maybe this season isn't their season to do incredibly well. They're not going to come out and just veloce it, where they'll come straight to the top of the table and they'll be a top contender. But they have a lot there that I see is something that they'll be able to work on and just increase their synergy and also themselves individually and get themselves higher on the table next season. Did they bring a level of unpredictability to the table that you weren't necessarily anticipating? Because I've likened them to early peeps slash Pittsburgh Knights where they were bumping, demoing, doing weird shit and it could catch you out. Obviously ended up beating them, but was there unpredictability? Absolutely. Um, I think, excuse me, I think both them and Singularity uh, have that kind of I, I think of it as like the new wave uh, of players where it's like they have this play style of they don't have all these old bad habits that, you know, people who started the game without a guide mm -hmm. did. These guys came in and had somebody to, to watch and like kind of mold their play styles off of. And, and I think the new wave of players are all just very fast players. They're very aggressive. They don't really have that much fear of, 
of letting the ball pass them because they're so quick, they'll get back. Uh, and so that's kind of how they are. They're very quick and, and they're, they're just super, super um, like they, anti- they try to anticipate everything and like they're so quick into the air and it's, it's really difficult to play against that play style. Um, but I think that uh, the way that we play when we're on a good day, I don't think there is a play style that necessarily counters us. Mm. Um, I think it's a play style that just it works so well that it's no matter how you play, if we're doing it right, uh, we can get around it, and and that I think that's what we did uh, yesterday, or is it two days ago? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. So yesterday, um, that's what we did. Is is we just we stuck to our play style, uh, and they were they were quick. They were trying to bump us. They were going for demos a lot, uh, and they were just quick into the air. But as long as we just controlled it and, and kept possession, um, we we held we held control of that series the whole time. Um, but I think they definitely have a lot of potential. Like they're all super quick players. And the more experience they get at this level is obviously going to do them, do them better and better. And so they're, they're probably going to become more and more consistent as time goes on. And, and that new wave of players, like you said, Pittsburgh Knights, you know, look at them. They're doing really well. Mm. Um, and, and just if they get more experience, they're definitely going to be scary. Do you, do you think there's anything that the old guard um, can learn from these guys? Because I remember uh, in, I think it was during RCS, Johnny Boy was saying that TSM, who are obviously struggling, tend to do better against their old mates, you know, against the K-Dops, the Violent Panthers <laughs> who've been around from the start, then they do against this new wave. Now, thankfully for Dignitas, and I say thankfully, it's because of a fuck ton of hard work, you guys are able to still <laughs> put these teams to the sword. But do you think there's anything that can be learnt from the new wave that maybe the old boys are, are, are a bit reluctant to accept this advice? Yeah, absolutely. I actually, this is something I had to work with Panda on coming in. Um, when I came on, and he's a very different person now, but when I came on, he was very stubborn in the sense that he didn't feel like he had to get better. Mm. Um, he felt like he was as good as he needed to be to be the best. Uh, and and his mechanics were just so far behind because of it. Uh, and I noticed he, he stopped working on them and he wasn't pushing himself to do anything new um, because he felt like he, he had achieved everything he needs to to, to, to do it again. Um, and so when I came on, just like right away, the first thing I had him focus on, I was like, you need to start putting hours in the game and get your mechanics better because you're you're already behind. And if you wait any longer, you're going to fall so far behind that you might not be a pro in, mm. in like, you know, three to four seasons because people are catching up so quickly. Oh, that's a hard conversation to have. And, and he's so smart that he could really probably stay a pro off of his game sense and, and rotations and knowledge like that as, as long as he can. But at a certain point, this game is going to become about, you know, being more efficient and the less mechanics you have the less efficient you can be so again i think that everything in this game has a purpose and a place it's just about finding where to use it do you Um, think having astral there helped to bolster that as well where he sees astral coming in like when he was picked up he was not unknown but much lower down the pecking order and he was a shock pickup at the end of the day over turbo pulsar when he obviously ended up leaving where do you think having astral there maybe kicked his ass into gear a little bit of like Fuck, he's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that uh, before I mentioned anything about it, no. I think he was just like happy to have such a good mechanic, like mm-hmm. a mechanically good teammate. Um, but I think once I said something and started pushing him to be more mechanical, he started paying more attention to the things Astral did. And uh, and there's actually moments in our replays where I'll stop and freeze frame uh, on something uh, and, and it's Panda and I'll say Astral what could he have done here? Like mechanically, what else could he do here? And Astral will say, well, he could have done this. It's obvious. He could have just done this. And we're all just like, we didn't know that was obvious. <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, he's, he, he has this. And I would, I would consider Astral new wave, his play style. He's mm. very quick. He's very mechanical. Um, and, and I think that he just, he, and I've learned a lot from this. He views the game differently than other people. Like he just sees it in a different way. Um, and, and there's just so many options available to him that nobody else playing this game has because of the mechanics that he has. So I think that that has definitely helped Pan. I've actually like, I've, I've, I've made them, I haven't made them cause they, they have fun doing it, but I've mm-hmm. had them like uh, practice together where I'm like, yo, if, if you need, if you want Panda to be better at a certain mechanic, sit in a one V one and do that mechanic against each other over and over. So like they would sit and do a flip reset one V one, or they would do ceiling shot one V ones and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And Panda would come out of it with a new skill every time. So it's definitely something that I think is valuable. God, you sound like 
the worst coach ever making them 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like hell to me. It's like, yeah, so you're not very good mechanically. I want you to sit in a 1v1 with Astral. <laughs> like, ah, can, I, can I quit instead? Is that an I see it more as like Verge telling them to drop and give them like 50. You know, like, oh, yeah. my arms hurt. Please stop making me 1v1 Astral. I've had enough. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, I think that uh, it's funny that you say that because I, I would agree with you. I think I make them do things they don't want to do, but I think I'm <laughs> maybe one of the few coaches who does that. I think I you think have a lot to, of the coaches, right? Yeah, I don't think a lot of the coaches realize that their their players are lazy. Uh, not in the <laughs> sense that they don't work hard for what they get, but th that they're complacent. Of course. That they just scrim. They just, yeah. you know, every like do an hour of a training pack. And it's like there's there's parts of the game that you have to work on outside of just scrimming. Like you have to work on everything there is about this game it's a sport it's like a, a full body sport where you mm. have to know how to control your body being the car uh in in every way shape and form to outclass your opponents and if you're not working harder than them you're not going to be better than them has another game ever jumped out at you the same way rocket league has no mm -mm. i was trying to think then if there was any in my head that i thought yeah. I, my immediate one was fifa and i thought no, no and no. then i thought <laughs> League of Legends. I was thinking, and League. you've got like you've got From sort of like combo esky kind of things, and yeah. you also go to fighting games, and it's like maybe that for learning new mechanics of like, okay, can mm -hmm. I hit this combo? But even then, like that's you've still then got Rocket League is in a completely different ball game because it's entirely physics based. I remember mm, that right. I think Achieve said it's like um it's the best physics-based eSport out there or something like that. And it's like, yeah, I agree because it's really the only one. And I guess being able to control yourself that finely leads to mm. fantastic coach things to be able to coach. Yeah, uh, I actually played League for seven years. Mm. Um, I played that for a long time. I liked it a lot, the strategy behind it, the thinking game. Um, and then I played, I've played FIFA my whole life, stuff like that. Um, but the moment I touched Rocket League, like yeah. it was instant, like I knew. Uh, I, I was so bad, but I like I knew the potential for it the first time I played it. Mm. I was horrible. I, I couldn't touch the ball, but I just knew somehow that I would one day be able yeah. to. <laughs> I, was, I was the same with um, Sart BC. So the demo for Sart BC was an hour and a half of the full game, except you couldn't match make ranked. So basically an hour and a half of the full game. Okay. And I remember that I ended up buying it before the hour and a half was up. I played one game <laughs> and I was like, right, I don't even need to do the rest of the demo. I just yeah. know I want this. So I was exactly the same. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is the game. Even if it's on the prequel. Yeah, you get what I mean. I just, I've, I've hated getting beaten by somebody like, like I, I've always hated the frustration of, like in a sports game, making a play and not feeling like you made the play because you pressed a button that gave yeah. you an animation. Mm. Like you gave one input that gives you like a multiple string of movements. Um, and with Rocket League, like everything is done on your controller. Everything that you do has to be done on your controller. Mm. And so like I knew the skill ceiling for it wouldn't exist. Like there's really no skill ceiling for this game. And so like I knew that I could just pour hours into it and never be satisfied with how good I get. Now, Cole, I know that's a worry of yours because I know you've said before that you think that the skill ceiling might be reached soon slash is reached. So I've got no doubt that Virgil about to call me an idiot and that's completely fair. So let me... <laughs> Why do you, you think back. I set this, this up? <laughs> <laughs> so this was last season, right? Where there were eight teams in the RLCS and especially in NA literally anyone was beating anyone and for, for my i've got to have this sort of narrative in my mind that i like an upset don't get me wrong but it has, to have an upset you have to have a better team and a worse team and i would say that all the way up until lan that apart from nrg that didn't really seem to be the case last season but then this season whether it's the increase to 10 teams or mm. it's just the um, actually I'll, I'll ask you why do you think this season you can see more of a gap between upper teams and lower teams then um, I think it's just got to do with the fact that people realize that they got complacent maybe mm -hmm. uh, and they realize that like oh crap if if these RLRS teams are coming in and like sweeping through us and making it to land instead of us clearly there's work that needs to be done we're not like we're not at the top yet uh, and I think for a while people thought they were um, yeah. and they were just thinking you know in the, in the sense of like well there's there's not much to get better at as long as we just stay here and continue playing more than everybody else we'll stay better than everybody uh, and once players, new players came in and showed that there's way more to learn, I think that kind of kicked everybody's butt into gear. Um, and especially with the addition of coaches, I think that, you know, depending on how the coach is working with the team, I think that personally, I think that it should be a very involved position. Um, mm. 
I don't know how their teams are doing. I know some, you know, treat their coach as like a hype man. Some um, are more so just like they're there to make sure that everybody stays level headed. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the fact that like, it's, it's just like soccer or football where the coach lays down the strategy because they see it from a different perspective. They see the whole team as a unit and how it needs to function overall. Uh, And, and he can push the players individually enough to get to the point where that system works really well uh, and just continuing to push the players more than they want more than they want to uh, and, and that's a big thing again is like that's kind of my style of coaching is more so of just I'm I'm that voice in the back of their head that's telling them what they tell themselves but don't listen to yeah um, where it's like they know they need to practice mechanics but then that voice in their head goes yeah, but look, look where you are. Like, you really don't need to practice mechanics. You're fine. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of that voice that overpowers that, that laziness. I'm pleased to say that as of this season, my fears, I think it's also because last season there, there was definitely, there wasn't, to me at least, much sense of identity between one team or the next. Again, NRG were probably the only ones who had it with Justin. But then this <clears> season with Astral coming into his own, Dignitas playing their beautiful passing style, a few teams picking up the PK play style, which did start to emerge last season, mm-hmm. thankfully. Everything mm. is everything to me now as a fan of Rocket League is as I want it. With you know, <laughs> this hierarchy that's visible, play styles that are visible, stories that are amazing and constantly being told, and just you you can see the difference between when Dinatesco are up against Vitality compared to when TSM are up against ASM. You know, mm. and that is everything I want as a as a fan. Yeah. Absolutely. It's another one of those cases, Cole, where you said about the different playstyles that are coming in. Mm. And the next series that Dignitas played this week <laughs> was against Veloce, Vel 1 O Che, where that was so hard. <laughs> it was four overtimes oh in the series, one after another. The final game ended up being 3 1, I believe. Um, which, which I think we scored one of the goals towards the end. So it was like really 2 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. Um, as far as I know, there's not been a five-game series that were all five overtimes. As far as I can think, at least in RLCS, there might have been some crackhead weekly. But I, <laughs> I don't know if there has been in RLCS. Go for Rocket League 17. Exactly, yeah. Somebody, somebody comments and actually, in ESL in 2016. <laughs> ESL 56. Yeah, like, oh, shit. Well, we, had a, we had a best of 12 that was all overtime. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, like, <laughs> voice is very British. You suddenly did a British accent when you were doing, like, oh, actually, voice. For us, it goes actually. nasal. <laughs> how interesting. Yeah. yeah, God, how dare you, Virgil? No, I, I just like think it. British people are, yeah, it's, it's my, like, wankers I just, they're, we are. they're annoying. That's yeah, no, yeah, that, that makes... <laughs> Holy shit, that means a lot. What the fuck? <laughs> um, so, obviously, during these four overtimes into the uh, final non-overtime game, um, were you worried that maybe after the loss yes. of Vitality last week um, and the pass-heavy style that obviously you guys, non- not very secretly, do aim for, we worried that it might have run its course? Because Vitality, they just had your number. At uh, Game 3, they were like, Caleb just goes, uh, they pass a lot. And the rest of them are like, <laughs> shit, yes, no, uh, good point. They're going, no, how did you see this? It's so obvious. Yeah, like they just figure it out. We worried that it might have just about run its course. Yeah. Um, so Vitality, God, I hate them. I love them because they, they push us. They push yeah, yeah, yeah. us. They push us harder than any other team, but I hate them because they always win. Um, they <laughs> they do. They they figure us out. And and like we the part, the part of it is that we kind of play into – their uh, counter to us um, when, and I think it's like a mental game. It's that we respect them so much that when they switch their play style to kind of counter that passing, we're worried that switching our play style won't be good enough to compete with it. Um, and I think it becomes like an issue. So we play into how they're playing and, and that series, like we, we dominated, we played how we wanted to play. And then we made one mistake, which was like a, a, a bad pass from Astro out of a clear. Yukio mistouched it. Panda was too far forward. And they had the open net in the overtime of game three. Um, they scored that. And just immediately, I felt the mood shift in our comms. And I felt the energy. Um, and I knew. I was like, we have to come back to where we were. And I tried so hard mm. to get us back there like mentally. And, and I just couldn't because Vitality. And, and they did the same thing to us at Worlds. They sat back. And they just waited for us to shoot. Mm-hmm. And they had three people in net covering every angle. And, and we played into it. We would just shoot at them. And they would take possession and leave with it. Um, and Veloce is very similar. They have a very yeah. passive play style. They sit on their goal line. They like to let <clears throat> us make the play and then counter it. Um, and that was like I was drilling that into their heads leading it up, leading up to that series. Is like, hey, guys, we might have to switch it up. We might have to do something different. 
um, take the space, like don't pass it just because that pass is there. Like mm-hmm. normally we're very, you know, looking for passes always, but against a team like that, we have to make them come to us first before we make that pass. Um, and that's something that we struggled to do against Veloce uh, yesterday. And Yukio scored an, uh, an own goal at one point. Mm. And the moment that went in, I, we lost. I was like, we lost. It's, it's over. We lost. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, the mood just shifted. And, and so um, it's it's definitely something that I had to, like, be. The, I'm, I'm happy I was there because, you know, it's a, it's a mental thing mm-hmm. to where they have to stay in the right mindset and, and continue playing to win and not give up in any moment. So, like, that defensive play style is really difficult for us to deal with, but it's something that we're, like, really, really working on. I've I've got to say that watching it, I did not feel relaxed for the 45 minutes or whatever so that series stressful. lasted. Every yeah. single second I was... It, it was like um when in, in football, your team's 1-0 up with five minutes left and the other team are knocking on the mm-hmm. door. And you can just see all these passes, all these plays, yeah. all these, like, 100,000 combinations and only one do they hold for the next 60 seconds, you know? It was... But thank Christ you guys won out. Yeah, no kidding. I was going to say, I remember watching that um on... Because... My girlfriend had a long day at work. She was like, I was going to watch a movie tonight. And I was like, of course you <laughs> fucking do. And it was like, she came in like as the, um, at the end of the Singularity Endpoint game that was leading into Veloce Dig. And I was like, I am not not watching this. <laughs> yeah. So we like, we sat on the sofa, we had dinner, whatever. And I just had it on my phone. On the, <laughs> on the arm of the sofa, just like, look, unashamedly, you know I'm watching this. And so I was looking at it and like Veloce has scored. And I'd visibly go, oh. And then like, <laughs> it got to like game five, and I at the end I was like, "Come on!" Yeah, same. <laughs> She's literally was like, "Can you please just concentrate on the film?" Like, what film was it? Like, no, Dune Dust One. They beat the bad yeah, it, guys. What film it, was it? It depends. What movie? Yeah, what movie was it? Oh God, I don't remember. Oh yeah. <laughs> there was something on Netflix. Um, so, clearly, something not good. Was no, it The it was... Irishman? Because I've heard that's quite long. No, no, she said she doesn't want to watch that because it's so long. We watch something, we're in a trend at the moment of watching really dumb films because we want to just watch easy films to not, yeah, to not care about so we can just like chat in the middle of them and it doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, the other day we watched, um, have you seen House Bunny? <laughs> The no. one it's... I don't think anyone listening to this podcast has heard of House Bunny. <laughs> House Bunny is a film with the woman in um, Scary Movie. You know the okay. blonde woman, the main actress. I forgot her name. Mm-hmm. Blonde mm-hmm. main actress. I'll Google it. You carry on. Yeah. Um. And she plays a Playboy bunny, who then on her twenty eighth birthday is too old to live in the Playboy mansion. Oh, I have seen this movie. It's a good I film. Have. And then she goes yes. to and, and then she goes <laughs> yeah. to a sorority. Anna and then K. coaches Barris. the so Anna, Anna yeah that's Barris. yeah. She then goes to a sorority and then teaches them how to like be better and whatever but in the sorority is Emma motherfucking Stone who doesn't realise that she's really hot oh, so you're there. she's got glasses <laughs> and slightly old and clothes and she wears grey the stupid ugly bitch oh no <laughs> terrible so Anna Ferris goes in there and she does like a car wash I bet she likes books she does <laughs> like books <laughs> and she had her hair up so yeah it's a, it was a very dumb easy film to watch that's what I watched the other day yeah. so if you guys have any suggestions of films to watch in the comments just drop in some dumb idiot films like Pacific Rim one of my favourite films because it's stupid as fuck and I love it <laughs> it's brilliant so yeah it was um, I was very happy watching the Indignitas series when it was over because of how yeah. incredibly stressful it was did you feel stressed throughout that as well yeah definitely um, we like for some reason when we hit like the the match point game we just get so nervous that like not not consciously i don't think mm. and it doesn't very much show in their their comms or anything mm. but i see it and i feel it that we play different and it's because like we know that we need to close out the series and we don't want to make the mistake of not doing it that we try too hard not to make that mistake and then we make that mistake mm. um so it's <laughs> on your mind so game yeah like match point for us is really scary uh like, cause we just, we can't close it out. So yeah, when that started happening, um, I know that we struggle against their play style. So I was really, really worried that they were going to kind of just like hunker down, sit in net and we wouldn't be able to figure it out. I think it really helped as well that during the endpoint series, Astral took it on his own shoulders to do some more solo players. I don't know if that was a conscious effort to then get prepared for the Veloce game where that, where that might've been needed. And it might've been sort of like the Hail Mary of like Astral will give you the ball. You do crazy shit because it seemed as if he was almost using that as a practice round to then (laughs) try and take down a team that counters it so perfectly. And I think it was an interesting series because 
oh, we said it on the stream beforehand. It's the two main teams where you can so easily identify their play styles. Mm. Where Dignitas have got Veloce's number and Veloce have Dignitas's number. And it, it's going to go to five. Everybody knows it. <laughs> it just depends on who wins out at the end. And I think everybody is happy that the good Rocket League won against the boring <laughs> Rocket League. I reckon even Freaky is deep down. He's like, do you know what? That's probably you know, fair play for Rocket League esports. Yeah, I saw. I mean, I, all of their tweets, like all, I, I think all three of them tweeted and said like, we're happy with that series. Like, even though we lost, we're happy how we how we played and how it went. And so, like, it, yeah, good on them for being so sportsman. Like, mm. um, but yeah, I think that it, it's definitely good that we won. Yeah, <laughs> everyone was on top form. I want to say as well that I've I've led the Veloce a boring charge since the start of our LCS season <laughs> nine week one, and I do want to say that actually they contributed a hell of a lot to that series. It wasn't Incredible just them sat, sitting back, letting Dinitas yeah. come at them and beating you away. They were brilliant as well. So yeah, yeah, they they like to they they like to sit in the midfield. It's like Freaky especially, mm. he's really good about just like on his way back being like the biggest asshole he can in between our passes. <laughs> I like he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's like he's so annoying for our playstyle because he's just like on his way back all the time, ready to just get in the way of our passes. And he was doing it and so it definitely made it hard for us. But I want to touch on what you said about Astro kind of taking it on his own mm -hmm. to, to, to do some solo plays. Um, we're we're actually working on that heavily because at the start we wanted to kind of get our team play style down. And, and solidify how we play as a team and how we play as a unit when we're all working together. Um, but Astral, being as good as he is, I know that he can do things no one else can do. And I know that he can, you know, in certain situations, 1v3 without mm. needing help, all he needs is somebody back in case it doesn't work. Um, so we've been working on kind of giving him in certain moments more space to do what he wants to do and learning to play off of it uh, rather than always looking to support for passes. If there's a moment where he can do something, He'll just, you know, he'll say, I think he said it on stream yesterday on the interview. He's like, leave me alone. Like, give me space. Like, I'll do something alone. Um, and, and we're getting better about supporting what we need to do to support that solo play to follow it up or to, to keep possession off of it. So we're, we're trying to give him more space to let him do things that Astral does. It's an absolute joy to watch as well. It is. And uh, before we move oh, on to I talking <laughs> about NARLCS, we haven't mentioned Yukio, I don't think, once in this podcast, which is very unfair. Uh, mm. Because he's been, <laughs> true, true. you know, just fantastic as the others. And to my memory, the last time a team played uh, in the same style that, D that Dignitas is now, and I mentioned it at the podcast before, is Flipside Tactics when Yukio was with them, when they mm. were always looking for that pass. Uh, I guess my question to you would be, to what extent has Yukio been instrumental in pushing forward this play style that, D that Dignitas are mastering more than any team ever has before right now? Um, he's a very important part. I don't think we'd be the team we are without all three of the players um, that we have. And Yukio, when I came on, like like you said on flip side, I mean, he was. I was so impressed with him when I was uh, on Allegiance <clears throat> watching his rookie, you know, season and, and watching him make it to land and just being as good as he was so quickly as like one of the only, if not the only, keyboard player <laughs> in the pro scene like that. Um, and, and so like <clears throat> I, I met him in Vegas, like I met him at LAN and I was just like, I was a huge fan of his. And so when I got to work with him, I was so excited. But when I watched us for the first time, he was not the player that I watched him on flip side. Mm. Um, he was a completely different player and I talked to him about it a lot. And he said that when he came on with Panda and Turbo, that they were trying so hard to fit the play style that had KDOP mm -hmm. that it almost felt like they wanted him to be KDOP mm -hmm. and he couldn't. Uh, and so for a long time, he changed his play style to be on that team because, I mean, realistically, in his position, what are you going to tell two multiple world champions when they're trying to, like, make you better yeah, and yeah. fit the team? Or are you going to say, no, I, I don't want to play like that? Or, you know, you can't really stand up to them in any way. So, like, I'm sure he had to just sit back and take whatever criticism and bite his tongue the whole time. And so I think he changed his play style in a way he didn't like and wasn't good at. And I noticed it right away because he was not the same player. Uh, and so when I came on, it was like a, it was a lot of work getting him back to form to where he was and getting him to trust that his his first decision and first like instincts were right. Because for so long he was being told, like, you know, you have to change your first instinct, be a little bit more patient, mm. try to sit back more because that was their play style uh, on the old dig was sit back, set up a counter, sit back, set up a counter. Um, and he's not that way. So, like, we had to build a structure around our new players uh, and make a new play style based on how all three of us play and, and build it around what what we have and not what we want, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. So 
he's i mean and he's the hardest working kid i've ever met in this game like he's he works harder than anybody i've ever met like and the fact that he was doing it i could tell he's doing it before i came on um and he's so so quick to just be ready to work on whatever he needs to 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 push himself to the next level but he has been probably you know a key factor in our play style from the moment we got to madrid um because the season before he struggled really heavily uh, and not all his fault either. Um, he struggled really heavily in finding his place on the team and and, and being confident in, in hitting what he needs to hit and going for the things he needs to go for uh, and getting back to that old Yukio that mm. we saw on flip side. Mm. Uh, but once he got there, I mean, it just it clicked right away. And, like, we're able to do things. Like, he'll be pre-jumping a pass that Panda calls, and he jumps and goes right where he knows it's going to go like go to, and, and Panda, you know, lasers it at him, and he puts it on target, bar down, top right. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's crazy. We've seen a couple of, of them, and it's absolutely yeah. amazing to watch as a viewer because, like, you see him go up, and like, you think, "Oh, okay, this is ballsy." Where, yeah, where is and this going? And he just fucking nails it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Why do you think you're allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> why do you think that's okay to yeah. do to this poor opposition? <laughs> These are goals that we theorized at the start of Rocket League. Yeah. Imagine if one day, dot dot dot, yeah. those sorts of I'm goals are being scored friends. by these guys. Like, imagine if they can pass in the air. Mm. That'll be cool. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to try dribbling. Like, it's, <laughs> it is amazing now that we're... I think this is now finally the season where we're seeing another bump in progression. Yeah. Sorry, another bump in progression, rather, yes. where you've got people who are trying new things, where season six to eight did start to just slow down a little bit. It started to plateau, and I was having similar worries to Cole, where is this the end of it? Do we get teams that could be anybody? Is it maybe slowing down? And now the fact that there's innovation again mm. makes me really happy to watch. And you can also tell that casters love the fact that they can talk <laughs> about teams doing different yeah. things. About something, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are unashamedly massive Dignitas fans. Um, we're so, so happy that they're doing very well. Hopefully next week as well as well. Otherwise, let's take a brief foray into North America before we get to your Twitter questions, foray everybody. Into because I said that we, that we were looking at two matches from one team in each region. And Cloud9 are the team we're looking at in North America. Where their first game was 3-2 versus Susquehanna, Lana Del Rey's. And it was one of the most incredible series I've ever witnessed. And if people didn't watch this, <laughs> Cole, what happened? Okay, so... You know your story of when you were next to Big Chaz on the sofa and you were meant to be yeah. watching Home Alone or whatever weird shit yeah, film yeah. and instead you were watching Dignitas. I was the same in this series. You were watching my friends. Home Alone with Big Chaz, my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, during this series. <laughs> but I, I was with my friends and I had it on my phone next to me, right? And I just sort of glanced over like, oh, Cloud9 and 2 nil down. That's a shame. I thought they yeah. were back. I look back. Wait a minute. Is that two all? Surely not. Oh, I'm going to game five. Cool. I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll keep a third of an eye on it now instead of a... No, I'll keep... Two thirds and a half instead of a half, right? So just yeah. watch it a little bit more. And uh, then about a minute into game five, <laughs> I look at it and I wait. Wait a sec, is that was that Fireburner? Why is he playing? I basically had no idea why he was suddenly in, and because I because I was like with my mates, I couldn't really yeah. watch much of this NA day. I didn't know if he'd started or what. So I just watched this so, game and I was like, I'll look back on everything else later. Yeah. But there's more to it than that. That poor old Torment's internet had gone out. Yeah. Fireburner stepped in, and I, I've got to admit, in front of all my friends, when Fireburner did score the overtime winner, I did a proper lame little fist pump. I was like, <laughs> yes! And I look at it like, oh, you're such a nerd. So, <laughs> the great. story of the series was the, the SQ ended up winning the first two games pretty unceremoniously. They were just better. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, I, t I turned the series off after those mm, two games. Really? I, I, yeah, I, I was like, all right, cool. Cloud9's not back. Classic. I walked off. Oh, yeah. no. um, <laughs> and then uh, Cloud9 managed to pull it back to game five. And apparently, literally, as Gimmick scored, the Game 4 winner, Torment's internet went out. Like, it was wow. near enough at the same time. Like, it was just gone. Um, that then meant that I think it was Johnny and Shogun then had to, like, do another little podcast and just try and fill in. Because everyone's like, <laughs> they love 20 it, though, minutes they? Yeah. stalling. They threw, to, I think, two breaks in the end. Like, they just kept oh, going. God. Shogun said, and we're going to get into the series. Then Johnny goes... No, we're not, Shogun. <laughs> and, like, um, and then they said, okay, well... That was a good Johnny impression. Thank you. Um, so then it looks like uh, Fireburner is going to be subbing in. And Twitter yeah, and bet. Twitch chat went fucking mental. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's um, too perfect. 
And then he ended up scoring the first goal. And we, uh, Verge, we do um, RLCS best goals videos every week. And during each yeah. series, mm-hmm. sorry, I during, watch them oh every week. God, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, every day, uh, me and or each day, me and Cole, then note down which goals. So you put down like uh, Cloud9 versus SQ, three minutes, 12, squishy mm-hmm. double tap or whatever. I literally put in the notes, if Fireburner scores a goal, it's going in. It's, go- <laughs> it's, it's going in the package. I don't give a shit if it's an awful tap in. Cool. Like, we're having Fireburner Cloud9 in that video. Yeah. And he ended up scoring. The goal to put them both ahead, and then go ahead, the goal. overtime winner, which both yeah. Gimmick and Squishy could have scored as well, but <laughs> Fate just had it so that Fireburner yeah. scored both goals in that game. Had to be. Yeah. Um, now, me and Cole suggested about three weeks ago or so, when it was starting to go downhill. I just want to on, say, be prepared yeah. for Verge to say we're not as smart as we think we are with this. Just before you go <laughs> <Yeah>. on, <laughs> that's I'm fine. not I'm, certain he's going to say you were right all along. This mindset is on. indestructible right now. Okay. I am riding on a high, baby. <laughs> all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we suggested that, although it was obviously in different circumstances, Torment just take a step back, just for one series, whatever, Get his mind out of the game. Take him, like Cole suggested, out of the firing line. It's an arm around the shoulder. It's to reassure him that things are going to be okay. And look, come back next week. Because you do that in football. Like, or um, any sport, really, where it's not right, just you. Where, a break. Yeah, give him a break. It's just a mental retreat. Let mm-hmm. them do their own thing. Maybe it won't work and they end up in the same situation they're in now. Or maybe it does work. But try something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to try something. Um, everyone called us stupid. Reddit were not kind to us. Greg and oh, I, he made very good points, but he also said we were wrong. <laughs> Later in the day, after Torment had to move his entire setup because I've been uh, DMing Torment's mum, lovely woman. Um, uh, she said that he had to quickly pack up his entire setup, go to his dad's house, reset it oh all God. up, and then play against Ghost. And they ended up three owing them. I think wow. that break did. <laughs> Cloud9 slash Torment well. And I am fully on the Cloud9 a back train. Would you agree, Verge? <laughs> Please agree, Verge. Um, Please agree with me. <laughs> Please agree. <laughs> no, feel free to disagree. Right. Feel free to you guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know why they're playing the way they are. Like, I thought it, at first, like, when I first saw it, I thought it was like with us. Uh, when I came on with Dignitas, I brought this whole new concept of how we needed to play and we we weren't good at it because we'd never done it and so for our entire season we struggled Mm. until we learned it and got it down and and it clicked and when it clicked it clicked Mm -hmm. uh and so i thought that was going to be the same thing with cloud nine is fireburner comes on as a coach he sees the game in this whole new way as a whole he has them play this new play style that he sees and and they're working on it and so they're not doing well and then i was just i'm i was waiting for the moment for it for it clicks and it just it clicks hard and Mm. they just like start killing everybody again but it hasn't and so I'm, I'm wondering if if that is the case or isn't to where he's bringing on a new play style or if he's just trying to encourage them in what they're doing. Um, I really have no idea why they're struggling the way they are other than maybe complacency in the sense mm. that they were the best team in the world two seasons ago mm. uh, so dominantly. And then they're just now all of a sudden fighting relegation in two seasons. Um, so it, it might just be the fact that they didn't feel like they had to change anything uh, with the new wave of players coming in and new new styles emerging. Actually, I've just realized that um, according to the possibility table thing that Stumpy mm-hmm. pasted into our document, the worst Cloud9 can finish is seventh. They yep, have they survived now, officially. They cannot end in the relegation zone, which is like, I think in week four or five or three or whatever it was, or week five, they were one and four. And now they're yeah. four and four. And playing like it as well. Yeah. It's not like they were losing yeah. the final OT game five goal, but playing well. They were crap. <laughs> On yeah. their journey there, they've been <laughs> NRG and yeah. SQ. Like, yeah. they've taken on the two top teams in North America. And they're like, so yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we can go four and four. Well, that's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> like, it's... I am... Um, yeah. It looks like they're competent again and that they're understanding yeah. it a bit more. And we always said... or I, We always said that we believe that there's something in Cloud9 that, like you were saying, just hasn't clicked. Something's gone mm-hmm. wrong. Maybe it's a mentality thing. Maybe it's just confidence, complacency, whatever it is. And I think we have to stress that Torment in Game 3 versus SQ picked it the fuck up. All of them did. And he brought them to Game 5 as much as anybody else on that team mm-hmm. did. And Fireburner just finished it off. And he proved 
that his place on Cloud9 is there at the moment and it's fully justified. I'm now interested yeah. to see if they do split up um, in season 10 because season 9 is a really weird one. Is it a real season? Is it like an interim it's very oh, interesting. There was a head shake there when somebody asked if it was a real one. <laughs> are, are you sensing demotivation then with the lack of land? Absolutely. I think every player got hit really hard mm. when, when that happened. I mean, <clears throat> of course we can't help it. And I think Psyonix made the right decision, mm -hmm. especially now with everything happening the way it is. Uh, they were definitely ahead of the curve. and um, But it, it really is frustrating for the players to not have that competition of like, we're fighting to get somewhere. Right now it's like, we're just... We're just fighting. Like, we don't know why we're fighting, but we're all just fighting. On a ship that's going down, you are the monkeys with knives. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's sort of gathering around <laughs> and trying to fight. Yeah. So, like, uh, winning, like, of course we want to come in first place in our region and, and be the best team where we are. But realistically, the entire goal of RLCS is to make it to Worlds and, and show everybody that we're better than every team, not just our region. Mm. So it's it's difficult to find that motivation to continue just, like, working as hard as we have because... Uh, I think I think we might have said it in a couple interviews here or there, but I genuinely believe we're the hardest working team right now. And so like it really hits hard for us as hard as we've been working the past six months on getting to where mm -hmm. we are and finally like succeeding and finally doing well. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the first season of my RLCS career that went well. Mm -hmm. and, and of course <laughs> from the beginning. You know, yeah. And of course right, and of course it now the world gets shut down and we don't have that opportunity to prove that everything we've been working for the past six months, the play style that we've been, been bringing in and mastering, it, it just, we, it doesn't hold as much value as, as it would have if there was a world championship. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a shame. We went over this last week with Greg and, but nobody is, nobody is saying that it shouldn't have been called. So how can I play it? Nobody is saying that it was the bad decision, basically. Like, right. it all makes sense, but it's still the impact. It's obviously very yeah. unfortunate. Um, so, looking forward to next week, very quickly, before we get to the Twitter questions. You've got one series left. It's versus Reciprocity, who right now are not looking particularly good. They don't look on form. They're um, struggling against a few teams. They're currently sitting in fifth. Uh how are you guys feeling coming up against them? Is it a reciprocity that you're happy to face at this point? Um, I mean, I would love for them to not be on form come game day, but <laughs> for some reason, they just love being at their best when they're against us. <laughs> they just like to play really, really, really good Rocket League when they're playing against us. So I'm definitely not like uh, confident that we're just going to go in and win it easily. Um, but I am excited to see that you know the way that they're playing gives us a good opportunity to kind of take take a win here when they're not on form um it, it would be it would be great to finish our season eight and one but we're definitely not coming into this series thinking it's a free win cool so not not becoming complacent like you like a lot of other teams never maybe at the moment, yeah. <laughs> never <laughs> okay we end these podcasts by talking or going through some twitter quick fire questions so these are all submitted um, to a tweet that we always put out on subpar but in HD. If you guys want to submit questions to our future guests, make sure that you submit them there. We always put a tweet out the day before or the morning of if we're really not very organized. So um, the first Twitter quick fire question to you, Verge, is why do RLCS teams scream each other? It's not saying that happens in real sports. Does it give away tactics and benefit the better team from at Mute Vickers? So RLCS teams scream each other. I know it's not something that people do in other sports, but in other sports you have like this huge plethora of players on your team with like an entire, basically an entire substitute team on your bench. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do, uh, they go on the field and they do drills and they do warm ups and, and, and stamina training and, and like courses and all this stuff. And I'm sure at some point they scream each other. Um, and, and it's because the teams are big enough to scrim each other. In Rocket League, you don't have that. Like, we don't have the structure. Mm. Psionics, if you're listening, I wish we did. <laughs> to do stuff in training packs and, like, private match training or just, like, setting up a, a free play with the team to where you can run drills as a team. Yeah. Um, there, there are things that we do on Dignitas where it's like we set up private matches with just us and we'll run certain drills but it's so difficult to set up all the time. And, and so there's just, there's not that much available in Rocket League for the training aspect of it and getting better. And, and I really think that's actually part of the reason why the game hasn't taken off the way it, it could is because when players pick up the game, there's no clear path on how to get from where you are mm. to playing at the level that mm. pros are playing. It's like, 
I just pick up my controller and sit in free play and figure it out on my own, or I have to go watch like hours of YouTube videos. There's no like training program in the game that really pushes you to do things that you need to do to play Rocket League. Um, so teams scrim each other because that's really the best form of practice there is uh, right now. And, and it definitely, I would say it benefits the lesser team um, a lot of the times because that team is being pushed out of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. They're playing against a team who's better than them and they're going to be learning things. The, the better team is typically benefiting less just because if you come into a series and, and it's easy for you, you're not learning as much as you need to. Great answer. That's a very wow. good answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what kind of things were you writing on the clipboard from at Ginger Triss? <laughs> Uh, I was just writing. I was just shit talking everybody on there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, uh, <laughs> um, on the clipboard. So when I'm at home, I'm able to write notes and stuff, mm-hmm. and like you know, take take notes when we're playing. And um, and when I was on that stage for the first time, like that was my first world championships. First world championships that coaches were allowed up there. Um, I was up there, and in between games, like was the only time I was allowed to talk. Uh, was like normally at home I'll, I'll be able to talk when we get scored on or when when we score in that little break mm-hmm. uh, but at the world championship they're were, they're were like very certain and they told us do not talk unless it's in between games which not everybody followed and I want it, uh. I want it to be known Ooh. that but it was fine some people didn't Ooh. and I don't mind tell you what, I don't tell you mind what, right this is a trust exercise <laughs> you like... because this goes through editing you say the name and Cole will bleep it I forget. I won't forget. No, I won't Cole, forget. you won't forget. I won't forget. No, you I won't, won't forget. Because in your head, it's there. Well, it, it, I don't. I don't think it was like only one person, but Gregan. NRG put out their Gregan? comms video. It was great. Well, NRG put out their comms video, and Sizz was talking during the games and during goals and stuff. And so I have nothing against it. I think it should be allowed. Mm. Um, I think it's part of the strategy of having a coach. But if that's going to be the case, it just needs to be equal. Everybody either needs to be allowed to talk, mm. or it needs to be enforced that nobody talks. Uh, and I was not to say that they shouldn't have won and like, oh, take away their title because Sizz was talking. That'd be big. <laughs> That'd be a, that's yeah. a massive yeah. statement. <laughs> you come out here and say, look, it's a false fucking win. They also, don't it's going to be really funny when I bleep it, when it goes, um, oh, yeah, I'm not saying they should take away their title because bleep was talking. Everyone yeah. was talking like, <laughs> well, I mean, realistically, you, you can say who it is because they put out a video with him doing mm. it. Um, it's on YouTube. And, and so I don't think and I don't think he was the only coach doing it. Um, but I think that it just needs to be fair. It needs because there were moments where I felt like I could have said something yeah. that could change the mood or change the thought process of how we're playing. So um, uh, that just needs to be handled and, and make sure that everybody does one or the other. That makes sense. Um, anyway, we weren't allowed to talk, and so in between games, I had sixty seconds to tell them everything I saw, um, whether it be how we were playing, we were playing, our opponents were playing our mood, our comms, what they were doing to counter us, what we needed to do to counter them. There's just so much information that I have to go through in that 60 seconds that I found myself forgetting things, um, saying, wishing I had said things, and in the next series, seeing it again and thinking, had I said that, we wouldn't be doing it here, or we would be fixing it, or we'd, we would have scored that. Um, so I, I, the next day, I brought up just a sheet of paper uh, and started writing those things down that I would forget, mm. so that in between games, I would just go down my list and make sure that I touched on every topic I, I saw in that game, Whether again, whether it be how our opponents were playing, uh, how we were playing, certain mistakes we were making, certain decisions, certain call-outs, certain moods, whatever it was, disputes between players. Because, again, I can't jump in and mediate during the game and, like, tell them, hey, like, shut the shut up okay <laughs> stop going back and forth like this is this is what needs to happen and you guys are just like wasting time bickering about maybe this or or you know it's it's one of those things that it really could have changed the way the game is played so i just i started taking those notes and writing them down and i knew i would get joked for it uh, i was you know i i know greg had a, i think a book up there at one point but i don't know <laughs> the if vitality branded book i need yeah to. <laughs> i saw i saw like he had pictures in there that he drew but i don't know if he was actually writing notes or not um he didn't say anything about it and i didn't see anything about it but uh, I brought it up there because I just uh, I knew that that was going to be uh, I didn't know how long our, our play mm-hmm. style would last. And so I knew that was going to be our best opportunity in that moment to win Worlds. And I didn't want to go home thinking I could have done something yeah. that I didn't do because I didn't want to get joked on Twitter for or something. Um, so, yeah, it's just a bunch of notes on on strategy. OK, this next question might be quick fire. We might get an entire recipe. <laughs> do you prefer... <laughs> Ma- now bear with me. Do you prefer mashed potato or jacket potato from our favorite food? One word answer. I don't. I don't know what a jacket potato. Just is. the like whole baked potato. potato, baked potato. Oh, okay. Baked potato. Um, Bloody Brits. So eh? I. Yeah. What was I? 
my grandmother makes the best sliced oh, baked potato I've go. ever had. And so it's a combination. No. It's a, <laughs> a jacket no, potato jacket with, with, with mashed in it. I, no, no, jacket, jacket. jacket. Or jacket or mashed? Mashed. Mashed. Yeah, mashed. Good, right, man. good man. Bad answer, but good man. As a master of motivational <laughs> speeches, how would you rate the speech at the end of Independence Day? And um, in case you're not sure what it is, uh, I've, I've got it for you here. I'll put it in our Discord so you can, if you're up for it. It's been a very long time since I've seen that movie. There you go, mate. You can give uh, that a okay. read. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist, and should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. It's pretty good. I should have rhymed in my speech. You should have done. <laughs> You should have got Shouldn't. Astro to drop you a beat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a pretty good speech. I would definitely run into battle with this guy after that. Aww. I think I'd need to. That makes sense after that. <laughs> um, from at Diabolical Pizza, objectively, who do you think is the best mechanical player between Astral and Justin? This might be biased, obviously, but I think Astral. I've, just, I've seen more from him, and I'm able to kind of see how he sees the game, and I think that he just... Sees it in a way nobody else does. Do you, do you oh. think that Astral is unique? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I don't think there's another player like him. I hope so. Maybe there'll I, be a new wave Astral that comes in, a new new wave, because Astral's quite new wave, but like a new new wave, like a baby right now, like who's going to come in, play Rocket League, yeah. and just be brilliant. Who just watched Astral. Yeah. Like he's <laughs> only watched Astral his whole, his whole life. <laughs> um, how do you feel about how much CJCJ memes you from at SonicRL23? I was unaware he memes me. Oh a lot. no! Uh, I, I know, like I know, I know, I know he. <laughs> I know that he memed me on the stream about my notebook, but I, I memed him back on the notebook. I wrote on there. Um, I don't know if many people saw it. I know he saw it because I saw the Twitch clip of him reading it. On the back of my notes, it, CJ, CJ, and Speed were doing watch parties, mm. and they joked me for the notes. I wrote on the back, CJ, CJ, and Speed uh, can joke my notes from home. Oh, <laughs> they well. so like a, oh Jesus. Uh, right. So, um, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't realize that he, he's still memeing me. So <laughs> I'll have to come up with something. I know that, um, he, um, references your inspirational speech. We're going, I don't care. Like <laughs> all the time. I don't care that we're three nil down or whatever it was. I mean, Verge, if it helps, I can guarantee you that CJ, CJ won't make land again this season. So you'll still have more. <laughs> No, I, I like the banter. I think it. I think it makes for good good content. It's great. Uh, how tall are you? From at True Tang Clan. I am six foot even. Oh, nice. Hmm. Which dig you, moment had you? Oh, you've moved your thing in the way. Something I can't see. Which Sorry, dig mate. moment had you the most nervous slash anxious as a coach? From at Forge underscore Coaching. Ooh. I think everybody knows the answer, and it's that game six overtime. Like, there's nothing. In, I don't think there's anything that will ever beat how like intense that was when i got off the stage legitimately my heart was pounding mm. so hard up there i got off the stage and i had chest pains <sighs> like it was such a difficult series to watch <laughs> it was so especially yeah. that that overtime like i i probably had more than one heart attack standing behind them <laughs> <laughs> i imagine like also having all of the crowd like i remember hearing in the comms video where you hear the crowd just when we mentioned it in our video as well where people just started applauding just like this yeah. is world, this is the game, and this being on stage for that must have been league. like otherworldly. Yeah, I mean, thinking about that moment and just like talking about it every time, it's just like it's very emotional. Mm. Um, thinking about that because being up there in that moment, like it was just all it, it came together. It was all the work we had done, every every like all the hours. I mean, I was I've been working like last year. I worked like seventy hours a week mm. just trying to get back into the RLCS as a coach, and then so from there. Working with that team and putting you know more hours in when, when I was part time, I was working full time. Mm. Um, I was with them way more than I was paid for, uh, and, and realistically, that's why I'm full time this season. As I told them, I can't I can't work mm. that much and not be paid full time. Mm. But I need to. I need I need to work more than I was working. So that's why I'm full time now. But like all the work we had, had done and, and and leading up to that series, it was just everything existed in that like six six a, a year and a half, eighteen months existed in that moment. Mm for me so it was just like having all that happening and the, the entire crowd behind us and just hearing them screaming just because it was such good rocket league and then hearing like dig no toss to everybody behind us and just like it, it there's no i've never there's no words to put accurately how i felt in that moment and and that's probably going to be a moment that i remember the rest of my life do you do you calm them down or hype them up after uh UK scores and before game seven um 
I think I did a little bit of both. When Yukio scored, I mean, we all screamed. Because, yeah, Ben Rundle we like, jumped like... up. His camera broke. <laughs> yeah, he broke his camera. Didn't <laughs> yeah. he? Went for it. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I had my voice that whole weekend. I didn't strain it at all. When he scored that goal, I screamed so loud that I immediately lost my voice. Uh, my, like, I, I had a raspy voice the moment after I screamed that. Uh, and, and so it was just, I mean, immediately I was like, we can win. Like, we could win this whole thing. And so, like, I was just screaming in their ear what I thought they needed to hear. Uh, and then there's actually a moment where Astro goes, uh, uh, Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that was after that happened. And we were just so hyped about it because uh, it was such a difficult series. Like that that overtime was like the hardest I've ever seen those guys work. Mm. Uh, and so to score that goal, I'm sure, was just like an immediate rush of relief and, and overwhelming happiness. And so I just tried to, to, to ride that wave with them and try to hype them up on it. Uh, and I was just screaming in their ear saying like, you know, it's not over. We, we still have one more game to go. So like, don't think it's done. But I, we're definitely happy about how we mm. played and, and, and everything. So let's just keep it moving. And and, and I'm, I'm actually making a, a comms video from that series of like trying to build the story just like I did with the regionals yeah. tournament uh, of, of how it felt for me up there. I so cannot I might wait a couple for that. Moments. Can't wait. <laughs> um, next question from at that one super. What's your best way to deal with tilt? So I think people tilt because they're too focused on getting rank. Uh, and when you're too focused on getting rank, you forget about how you get there. I think a lot of people look at rank as like, that's what your skill is like equivalent to. Uh, and the problem with that is that Rocket League is so volatile. There's like so many different ways to play it and be good at it that you can't really compare your skill to a rank, I think. I think you just have to focus more on your skill. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you think about, instead of thinking about how good am I compared to that guy or how good am I compared to this rank, if you just continue to ask yourself, how good am I compared to how good I was yesterday? How good am I compared to how good I was 500 hours ago? You'll start to realize that you are getting better every day and that as long as you're getting better, you're not losing because you get better at the game, you have more fun. At the end of the day, that's what Rocket League's about is having fun. So if you just focus on getting better every day, I think that you'll stop getting so frustrated with losing rank. Uh, final question is from at Emil Cole 93 who says, please tell me this makes me smart. And he's, he's shared a link. What's he shared a link to? Um, oh, it says, what is this big link? shout out to me for literally being second in the world right now in Fantasy Rocket League. So do you I think that makes that. a Milcom 93 smart? It depends. Who are your players? Uh, a Milcom 93, off the top of my head, has Cooksey and someone else in defense, has Astral and Gimmick in midfield, has Ferrer and Ronicky in attack, I can't remember if I have a defender. Um, yeah, Cooks here and someone. There's your team. Your team are Fairy called Peak. the Ginger Cooks Virgins. Peak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you have um, Fairy Peak and Cook's defense, Astral and Gimmick midfield, and then Ronicky and Ferra attacking. I'd have to say that probably sounds like the second smartest man in the world to me. <laughs> <laughs> Behind Aiden Six. <laughs> His team name is Aiden's team. <laughs> now i don't want to brag myself um sure but i'm currently 1300th in the world right now does that make me smart probably about the 1300th <laughs> smartest man in the world i'll take it i take those i have got <laughs> if i can tell you there's, there's a lot of people in the world i have got violent panda on my team it's a good pick yeah, it's a very good pick cool okay it's so good pick. cole we both won there we well done <laughs> <Go to laughs> both did it we'll call it a draw <laughs> yeah verge Thank you so much for joining us this episode of the Sub Pop Odyssey. You've an absolute dream, mate. You have. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. This was like, I mean, coming into it was a little nervous, but you guys make this like a really enjoyable environment and it's a really good time. Oh, you little sweet pea. What do you like? <laughs> um, everybody, if you enjoyed this podcast, we are on, I always forget to mention this, we're on iTunes, we're on Google Podcasts, we're on Spotify. Just look for the link in the uh, description of this video. Drop it a like. Drop a subscribe. Also go to Verge's YouTube channel. 100% subscribe to that because they are fantastic little tidbits of information to help improve your game. Otherwise, good luck next week, Verge, and I hope you finish top of the table. Thank you. I do too. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody. See ya.